the ashram life also has this democratic mm. processes where in the evening we are all we all gather together in the meditation hall for meditation ah, okay. so during the meditation hall everybody has the right to say what they want to say yeah. if there is an issue if there is a problem if they want to do something and then uh, if people agree with it we go ahead with that mm -hmm. you see the thing is uh, the democratic process in the ashram is is not like a written document or a written way or a, a very well crafted way it's a very spontaneous way where there are you know where there is no hierarchy and everybody it's a fluid kind of hierarchy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. every child has someone with whom they feel comfortable right. and that they share with that individual and that person approaches somebody else and there is no certain path to reach you yeah. know to make the information reach to a particular place mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so anybody can come to me anybody can go to somebody else any company can go to the founder it's right. all the doors are always open mm -hmm. and we can go to hear somebody it's uh, it's like that so, so the the adults have been in the ashram has long been around longer than the school and so the adults basically developed a community process a way of living together holding the ideals and the ideology and then the school came along <laughs> right um, and no so actually it happened simultaneously more or less simultaneously okay. Okay. because in the beginning we didn't have adults oh really i mean my only founder was the adult and along with them we we were children oh i see i didn't know that and that's how he passed right uh, in some ways he translated those ideals into the system Okay. Okay. And so, we we grew up in those in that system and uh, abiding by those uh, ideals. Right, right. We so are. the point still holds. The the point I was making is just that through the founding process, the the, the ideals were held and 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 a system developed. Right. It may not be written down. Yeah. But but there's a there's a sense there's a yogic tradition behind this. There is you know there there's a cultural tradition behind right. this. And so these children are not showing up and you know not knowing what to do entirely. Mm -hmm. They may not know hygiene. They may not know how to behave in this one or you know, but there are expectations and there is a cultural support for those things. This right. is one of the things I find is that the, the schools that have been successful for for any length of time find some culturally embedded way of doing their school. Mm -hmm. At Summerhill, it was you know one thing. At Sudbury, it was another, and here it's a it's a different one. Right, right. So, but but you found a way to to express Nepali culture, to hold sacred the the values that your founder brought, right. and now you you've simply grown in that mm -hmm. and have come back to uh, continue right. the work. This is the Agentic Schools Podcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. I'm your host, Don Berg.